while I really, really love my alone time, she, Kate, she sees it as a big downside in her life. I know, mind-blowing, right? It's the same thing. I eat dinner alone. She eats dinner alone. But the way we think of it is where is very different. It took me years to accept the fact that my dad abandoned me and that being alone doesn't mean being lonely. It's me who has the ability to label the time spent alone as lonely or fun. Okay? Our beliefs and our values are what defines how we feel, but our past trauma also plays a very big role in forming our system of values and your beliefs. Because unpleasant memories and events create our emotional burden. Unpleasant memories and events create our emotional burden. Think of your emotional burden as your very own backpack that you carry with you all the time. Everywhere you go, that backpack comes along with you. So naturally, if you ever felt bad around guys or bad on a date, your brain goes, "Uh uh-huh, Eureka, this is what makes me feel bad. So let's just avoid this part forever and problem solve. And that's why letting go of your emotional baggage is so hard. It's not as simple as, oh, just forget about it. It's about, it's about completely rebooting your system of beliefs and values you have about life. So f- my friend Kate, she really believe she really believes that it's impossible for men or anyone really to like her for her and she feels very insecure about her looks even though she looks she looks drop dead gorgeous. It's her mentality is really holding her back from experiencing some really wonderful things, you know? So the backpack on Kate's back, my friend, her emotional burden is shaping how she thinks and feels whenever she goes on a date. Okay, so if your emotional baggage is stopping you from living your best life, here are some strategies. Here are some strategies that I have that you can use to get rid of your emotional burden. Try try it out. Okay, uh, number one for my suggestion is look at yourself from a third-person perspective. Look at yourself from a third-person perspective. Well, while we are the only living things on the planet that can mentally rewind our lives we can press play and look back in the past or press play and try and predict the future and that same process that same process enables the brain to learn from our past mistakes or be aware of future consequences to protect us and help us survive when, whenever we encounter a situation, say going on a date or a job interview, it is a situation for the brain. The first thing our brain does is look for a similar situation that has already happened to us so it can, gives, so it can give you hints and pointers on what is the best way to handle it. Let's say... Let's say you get really anxious at a job interview and you struggle to present yourself in a positive and confident light. If you take the time to dig a bit a bit deeper, I guarantee you that you will find the situation zero, as I like to call it, the situation where it all started, situation zero. 
It doesn't have to be a job interview. It can be something that happened to you back in elementary school. For example, mm, let me think of an example. Hmm, um, for example, if you ever, if you, if, if your first ever admittance test went really bad, your brain will make a mental note out of it every time you talk to someone of higher authority, authority like a HR manager. You know, like the the <coughs> admission, <coughs> excuse me, admission test that you have in college or in middle school. So the brain immediately recognize any similarities, and so your brain recognize any similarities that make you feel the same way, and we feel the same way even if the present situation has nothing to do with the past one. It's so easy to feel like a disappointed and sad six-year-old again. Yep. Anyway, to make yourself snap out of it, take the third-person perspective. That is, that is my advice. Take the third-person perspective. This is something another dear friend of mine taught me, and it really helps me get the real perspective instead of holding on to what my brain thinks it's real look at yourself from a distance what would that situation look and feel like to a total stranger someone who didn't have your bad experience would it be as big as you imagine in your head would you react the same way would you feel the same way 99% of the time, the answer is no. This has really helped me snap out of, <coughs> excuse me. This had really helped me snap out of anxious mood, anxious mood and put things into perspective. Another exercise I find useful is to pretend that a friend of yours is dealing with the same situation you are dealing with now. What advice would you give to them? This allows you to offer a rational, a rational and compassionate advice because you love your friend. You want to be there for your friend. And I also realized that this works because it helps me be kind to myself in difficult times. Instead of putting myself down, um, um, instead of put, putting myself down for acting out. I know it's really easy to give advice to other people and it is really hard when it comes to taking our own advice. So be patient with yourself. I have a question for you. What are the beliefs that are holding you back? As you all know, I quit my job to run my self-help business full-time. As someone who spent years at a corporate job, I felt very unproductive during the first few weeks simply because I didn't feel like working from 9 to 5. I often work really early in the morning or late at night while everyone is sleeping and everything is quiet. It took me at least a couple of weeks to realize that I don't have to work from 9 to 5. I don't have to work 9 to 5 now. I can work whenever, whenever I want. So I took a pen and paper and wrote down the beliefs I have about being successful and it blew my mind. Because I realized one of my old beliefs is that people who work from 9 to 5 and people who spend all their lives working are successful. Once, once you dissect your beliefs like that, especially the beliefs that stem from emotional trauma, you're going to discover a whole new world that guides your mood on a daily basis level. I cannot believe I was being hard on myself just because my just because in my head 